It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. I am back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, get ready to sip this hot tea. What's up, Al? And what's up, Funky? How y'all doing? What's going on, everybody? Good, happy, what's this, Wednesday? Happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday. What y'all got going on today? What's happening in your world? Oh, nothing. Slow, slow motion over here, baby. Slow motion. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. working. Just working. Working away. Working away. I got a pot roast in the oven. And speaking of pot roast, my face is a pot roast. You ever go on vacation? Do y'all put sunscreen on on vacation? I don't. I, I try never, not to. I never use it. And I have like, I, my face feels like leather right now. Like it's horrible. It's like peeling right now. Anyways, so I'm just putting it out there before y'all come for me to chat. Yes, I know I look very dry and I need some water. But anyways, y'all sipping tonight? Are we, what are we doing? We drinking? We drinking uh, water? I'm on a little uh, combination of cranberry juice and ice. <laughs> I'm doing something new and different. I'm doing a red wine spritzer with blackberry bubbly. I'm doing a red wine with a spritzer, blackberry bubbly. Tastes good too. Okay. Did you create this recipe? <laughs> no, it's talking about that's the only thing in the house. <laughs> I was going to say, you sound, you sound like a college student when we didn't know how to drink. <laughs> And you just be mixing just anything. Mixing stuff together. <laughs> Me and my like, friends. We don't have nothing else in the house, but I want. I I, I need something to deal with you too. <laughs> who, who else did this in college? Me and my friends would get we'd pull our money together, get a seven dollar bottle of vodka or rum, and mix it with like Kool Aid or Tang, because that was all we had. Yeah. I hated Tang, so I never did the <laughs> Tang thing. But I have been guilty of trying different things and thinking, oh, this is about to be good, and it'd be nasty as hell. You know, I used to take the 2020. Did anybody drink Mad Dog 2020? It was like 99 cents. I, 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 I drank Cisco's back in the day, but I didn't do Mad Dog. Right. They, so they were the same. We used to put, mm -hmm. put Kool-Aid packs down in it to make it taste better. So, Q, yeah, you're right. Mad Dog 2020 came in that kiwi flavor, the green one. Then they started branching out. It was two dollars and nineteen cents, and it was horrible for you. That and Cisco, how you making bad decisions, right? Yes, All right. Speaking of bad decisions, let's get into our show and our topics. Uh, Lizzo was hit with a big lawsuit filed by three of her former dancers. The woman accused Lizzo and her team of sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment. Now, TMZ Live interviewed two of the dancers in the lawsuit, Ariana Davis and Crystal Williams, take a look. For both of us, there was like this always looming um, feeling of thinking that if you didn't do something or you didn't adhere to certain uh, suggestions or demands that your job could be in jeopardy. There is so many instances where um, dancers who did, you know, have fun with her and, you know, um, go along with like what she was doing and, you know, be down for anything that they were, they were favored, they were hired for more shows, they were invited on, you know, like private jets and and to do cool things and, you know, could hang out with her and in like tropical settings like Hawaii and stuff like that. Um, some of our coworkers, you know, it's it's just like there was no line between professionalism and personal. Another woman who claims to have formerly worked for Lizzo posted on social media. So for clarification, I'm not part of the lawsuit. But this was very much my experience and my time there. Big shout out to the dancers who had the courage to bring this to light. Also, the dancer on the left, the heavier girl, she was also, I was watching some of the interview, she was saying how Lizzo started treating her differently when she gained weight, which is definitely ironic. Uh, what are your thoughts on these accusations against Lizzo? Let's start with you, Al. Oh, you know what, Claudia? This is just really alarming to me. It's funny how all the blogs and all of mainstream media is picking this up and they're giving it a lot of attention. The part that really hurts me to my core is that Lizzo has been very vocal about how she was abused, talked about, made fun of, and bullied because of her weight growing up. And to see her do this to her dancers to see her do this to other people is the part that just doesn't fit well with me but then i thought about it psychologists say 30 to 40 percent of people that are abused as children 
they become abusers themselves when they become adults. And I kind of hear this undercurrent in all of the stories. Now, the bit that we saw right there, I didn't like what they said because that's that's just who she liked. It's who she gave favor to. What they should have focused on was the abuse part, the harassment because of their weight, the isolation because of the sexual harassment or her not them not doing things that she wanted them to do. I think I'd have laid my hat on that and not being excluded from exclusive things. The other part is I can't wait to see what the fallout is going to be because we know when Jonathan Majors was accused of sexual assault and even abuse, he started losing endorsements immediately. I haven't seen that with Lizzo yet, but let's see if Amazon will still have her dot com with her clothing line. Let's see if she's going to lose any work or any projects. And the other side of this is I can't wait for her to respond because Lizzo's on social media every day. But the last couple of days, she's been quiet as a peep. Sam Cook said, are these all disgruntled employees? I need Lizzo's side. And Callie Girl said, Lizzo had the nerve to ask one about a, ask one of them about gaining weight. Q, what do you think about this? You know what, my sentiments definitely echo Sam Cook's about the disgruntled employees. I want to know what was the catalyst for them coming out. To Al's point, I'm side-eyeing the hell out of her when she's talking about, they were invited on private jets and tropical settings and to do cool things. Bitch, maybe she just ain't like you. And that's okay. And that's allowed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the weight thing concerns me, right? Because y'all get mad all the time when I say this. Nobody wants to be overly fat and nobody wants to be overly skinny. And it's the God honest truth. If we could all have the ideal body type, we would. And anybody who tells you otherwise is lying. So I wouldn't be surprised that a heavy person or somebody who represents a heavy person is getting on other heavy people about their weight because it's not ideal under any circumstance. Um, however, you would think that Lizzo's camp would be a safe space for big girls, but according to them, it, it may not be. You know, I do want to stand in the entertainment uh, world. Actually, it is the one profession where you can kind of get away with they won't call it discrimination, but they'll call it the preference for the look of the aesthetic of what they want, right? If they want dancer, mm -hmm. if they want a model that's in shape, they want a model that's in shape. If they want someone's physically fit, that's the one where it's a little bit of a gray area. So I understand saying you have a, a limit for what you want your show to look like for your people you're hiring. I get that. But all the other stuff, uh, you know, the the abuse, and I, I do understand what they're saying, they show showing favor. Okay. Uh, Fan of Five said, no one should lose anything until they have actually been found guilty of something. That's true. But we yeah, but do they do. Society. We do that all the time. Uh, Chris Sierra said, sexual assault and discrimination ain't the same. Doubt shall lose anything over this except dancers. And this is an interesting comment. Unapologetically Me said, Lizzo has been allowed to get away with inappropriate and bad behavior because she's a plus size woman. Anytime somebody calls her out for bad behavior, they were labeled as a body shamer. I can't agree with that. And I don't know if it's because she's a plus size woman or just because she always got them crying and don't nobody want to hear her mouth. Like we, we all have those friends that we let get away with certain behaviors because it's just easier to let them get away with it than to have to hear their mouth in the aftermath. And I think that's what Lizzo is. Who you know, knew that she was having such fun when all these strip clubs and parties everywhere she went? Lizzo sounds like a bit of a fun time. Not if you're working for her and they say, eat that banana out of that right. employee's vagina. And oh, I know. That was gross. That was pretty. And then oh, they no. the people say, eat a banana out of somebody's vagina. She made That's one of the girls eat a banana out of, well, not made, allegedly, allegedly made one of the girls at one of these, you know, clubs, one of these uh, burlesque shows or whatever, eat a banana out of a girl's vagina, also catch objects that were pushed out of the girl's vagina, et cetera. And she was forced, one girl was forced to touch uh, a nude part of one somebody's body. Because, Allegedly, right? Allegedly, yes. So supposedly they were all in, new, in Amsterdam and there was a show over there where they, that was like part of it in the red light district. And then cut to today, their video that came out where she's saying she wants to go to the show where the banana gets eating out of the girl's vagina. So it's like, ooh, it's looking kind of bad. But you know what? We will see what other facts come out about this case. All right, another person in some serious legal trouble is former President Donald Trump who just picked up his third criminal indictment. A grand jury charged Trump for his role in the January 6th riot and efforts to overturn the 2020 election. What do you think about these set of charges against Trump? And one note, uh, with all three indictments, Trump's felony charges uh, count is now at a grand total 
of 78 felonies, according to Newsweek. How ghetto is this President Funky? What do you think about this? Honestly and truthfully, Claudia, I have no energy for this. Um, it doesn't move me at all at this point because this man has been able to get away with everything under the sun. Somebody down my line once we get a conviction. But this this right here, honestly, is it, it means absolutely nothing to me. All right. Al? You know, that's the sad part that we're desensitized to this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. This is a case of the United States of America versus Donald J. Trump. Let's let that sink in for a minute. This is how it's filed in the federal court system. Think about what we're saying here. We're saying that the United States of America, which is 236 years old, is filing a lawsuit against a past president. That, that to me is beyond significant. However, like you said, which is what a lot of people are feeling, which is we got to shift this somehow, is what does that really mean? Because he's been able to get away with it. What does that really mean? Is it shifting any of his, of, of, any of his base? We know he's still 37 points ahead of DeSantis, even amongst 70 something odd felonies. What is it going to take for America to realize this idiot that they are beholden to does not belong not only in the race for presidency, but in the White House ever again? You know, it just says a lot more about our country than it does about Donald Trump. There's assholes left and right, okay? But the fact that, you know, we went from the first time he ran for president way before, right? He ran against Hillary way before that. It was a joke. America had more sense. We were more like closer to what we used to be. Like, wow, that we don't want anyone that would be like that. He's a clown. No one took him seriously. And the fact that he's gained momentum over these years, the more outrageous he gets, just like the more outrageous people get on reality TV, on social media, it's just a trend in our society. The worse you are, the better. You are, you are, you're, you're, you're a narcissist. You're an asshole. You're mean. You are exciting and good to watch. You're good TV. You're nice. You're classy. You do things by the book. You're boring. And, you know, you, you just, it, we don't, we don't care. The fact that we are looking at our politicians to entertain us, then to lead us is a problem. And 17% of, of Republicans are not moved at all by these charges. They think that's, I'm sorry, only 17% think it's something wrong with it. I'm sorry. 17% think something's wrong with it. Everybody else is like, eh, it's a witch hunt. And that's crazy. Yeah, but do they see that this is jeopardizing our democracy? It's also jeopardizing our right to vote. <laughs> doesn't He's matter. right in history in it, our right and ability to vote. It doesn't okay. matter. It doesn't. I mean, I'm sorry, Claude. It doesn't matter to them. Um, logic goes out the window. What a lot of people don't understand is white supremacy requires undying loyalty. All right, and they are they are able to distance themselves from this cognitively and throw out everything that doesn't coincide with their worldview. I, I'm a very fair person, and I'll give that side the benefit of the doubt. Okay, maybe 50% of this shit is a witch hunt, but 78 counts, 78, I would like to know from them, of the 78, how many do they feel are legit? And look how, how much of a heart on they had for Hillary Clinton and her emails. Look how much of a heart on they have for, for Hunter Biden, who's not even a political figure. He's a private citizen. So it's like they pick and choose when they want to go. It's a party of law and order. Like Marjorie Taylor Greene, someone put her on blast. Ah, we're about law and order. Then it's like, leave Trump alone. It's, it's, when it's their team, it's tribalism, okay? When it's their team, you know, nobody wants to do anything about it. And Democrats, we don't want to want to, oh, let's be fair. Let's prosecute our own. It's it's irritating. We, we're not playing by the same set of rules. All right, y'all. Earlier this week, we shared the tragic story of O'Shea Sibley, a gay black man who was killed at a Brooklyn gas station after he was voguing to Beyonce's renaissance. Now, in response to the tragic news, Beyonce paid tribute to O'Shea with the words, rest in power, O'Shea Sibley, written on the singer's official website. What do you think of uh, Beyonce's tribute to O'Shea, Al? I just think she's a class act. But let me tell you what else uh, Beyonce did. Beyonce, remember, used to mention Lizzo in the Queen mix of Break My Soul. That You know, her name used to pop up on the screen with the other women. What I thought was so cool, well, kind of cool, but cool, is that Lizzo's name is no longer there after this shakedown in this recent news. And she now has put O'Shea's name there. She's just a class act. We love Beyonce. But someone said that she didn't say uh, Solange's name too. And Tina Knowles was like, she didn't say her sister's name either. So relax. I was like, okay, little mixed message there. Uh, Q, what do you think about this? 
Uh, definitely, to Alice's point, definitely a class act. It was definitely a beautiful thing um, for, her, for her to do for this young man who lost his life. And um, I'm like Al, too. Yeah, she might not have said Solange's name, and she might have did that on purpose to throw us off, but it's beyond obvious. Her team made her take that out to distance herself from this Lizzo situation. Mm -hmm. right. So sad that we still have to talk about these kind of stories. You know, it really is. All right, Young Miami recently posted that she's the Black Oprah. Do you think Young Miami has earned her new nickname or um, it, it just know Oprah is Black, so same though? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of... She more like the free from 106 and Paul. <laughs> uh, young Miami, Carisha, Carisha Brownlee, I love you. <sighs> but girl, you get one little piece of talk show and now you the Black Oprah. You ain't even begin. First of all, you're... We gonna need your subjects and your verbs to agree before you can <laughs> even mention Oprah. All right, we gonna need you the, the black Oprah. I'm the black Lord. <laughs> there are just so many places I can go with this right now, but because we have to go to commercial shortly, I'm just not even gonna do it. Al, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you. I, you. We gotta be honest. The first time she said it, it was funny. The second time, now I'm in my feelings because now you're disrespecting a woman who, who has written legislation, who was ranked one of the most influential women in the world in 2007, who created a dynasty of a, a production company, who ranked the greatest black ph philanthropist in American history. Oprah has done some things, uh, young Miami. Baby, I don't know on this one, I'm gonna have to have you take several seats. I get what she's saying to her demographic, like to the hood. But um, maybe the ghetto Oprah. Oh, the hood, yeah. the hood Oprah. The hood Oprah. The hood Oprah. The hood Oprah. The hood there, Oprah. We solved it. Marvin DeMar, <laughs> she said, she can barely speak child. And <laughs> girl, bye. But you know what? You're not the black Oprah. You're not the ghetto Oprah, young Miami. You're, you're young Miami, and that should be good enough. You're funny All as right. it. You don't need to be the anything, anything. All right. All right, y'all. Coming up next, find out what disease is spreading in Florida, what isn't. And later, New York City is facing a serious crisis. Stay tuned. Well, come back to TGIF. All right, whether good, plan good, bad, ugly, or just plain dumb, the tea is always overflowing with crazy news stories out of the state of Florida. And that's why we're giving you the 411 in What the Florida. In Florida news, Vice President Kamala Harris has rejected Governor Ron DeSantis' invitation to debate Florida's African-American history standards. The VP has criticized Florida's education standards on Black history for teaching students that slaves develop skills that could be applied for their personal benefit. Funky, uh, do you think the Vice President should have met with <laughs> Governor DeSantis? What do you think? You know, this is the one time that I'm going to have to jump ship and abandon my role as a <laughs> legal counsel of Florida and work against my own best interests. And yes, Kamala did everything she should have because DeSantis was trying to do nothing but use her to platform mm -hmm. himself to get on getting big media and spread all of his foolishness. Let me tell you something, little man. You're not you, the, the problem is you think you're the smartest person in the room and we see through you. Kamala's a black woman. A, a black woman is the first person that's going to see through you, and you're not getting none of her time. No. That's right. Al, what do you think? Absolutely. I think she should absolutely not, because number one, like you said, that was he was going he was going to pimp her to get that to get that base riled up. Right. Because, you knew he was going to be disrespectful. And we know VP Harris's approval rating has been down for the past two years. I think this move, though, could be a pivotal move for her. It's great to see VP Harris getting back into her groove and her stride and going on the political offense, especially against these white supremacists and the these Republican extremists. I'm loving it. I love this pushback. And this is the type of Vice President Kamala Harris that I want to see more of. And I do think she's been wanting to do this, but I do think because of the clear difference in the mental capacity between Joe Biden and Kamala, having her out front doesn't help him. You know, having him out front makes it, that shows she should have been the one to be president, really. That's what I think. But Kamala Harris, Vice President, Madam Vice President, I love you, and I'm so glad that you are, are making him look stupid. And Ron DeSantis, if you think you was about to have a debate with Miss Harris, you were going to look really stupid because you all you got to do is go back and look how she handled Mike Pence. And look how Andrew Gillum handled you 
You got your ass kicked in, in those debates. And you think you're going to come for Kamala? She's going to make you look stupid. She did you a favor by not coming down there. All right, another Florida news. The CDC is reporting that cases of leprosy are surging in ugh, central Florida. According to the CDC, Florida accounted for nearly one-fifth of reported cases in central Florida at 81% of the cases in the state. <laughs> Y'all got cocaine in the water, weed in the water, your manatees is raping each other, and now you got leprosy. Meth in the soy sauce. Now, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This fake news. This is fake news, okay? Okay, okay. Let me tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. Houston, Texas got mad by their 128% of their syphilis, okay? Mm -hmm. Planted this story because they, they got tired of me talking about it. It ain't nobody but Houston, Texas, with that baby puss. All the women's in, all the women's in Houston. Y'all got that 128%. Y'all trying to distract. Okay, this was just a little few cases of leprosy. Leprosy don't even kill people in 2023 no more. Take you two Benadryls and some Robitussin and you'll be fine. No, no. Texas, no. we see what y'all <laughs> trying to do and we ain't falling for it. You know, I see that. I see why you live in Florida because much like Ron DeSantis, you deflect <laughs> when you're clearly losing. You deflect to something else. So it, it's on brand. <laughs> All right. The state of Florida has recently been dethroned. <laughs> as the best place to retire. Real quick in the chat, someone said, I don't like Florida because that's where Amarosa lives. I don't know, if, no, I don't know where that heifer lives. Jacksonville. Yeah. Okay, I don't know, I don't follow her, like. No, oh, they were saying you don't like, I thought they were saying they don't like it. Oh, they said, because I did, yeah, I don't like it. I don't oh, like, but I, I ain't gonna give a segment to this lady. All right, they say a Z throne as the best place to retire. Now the great state of Iowa beat out Florida for the top spot, knocking Florida to the eighth place on the list. Funky, are you going to retire in Florida? You think you're going to stay there? Honestly and truthfully, y'all, I'm looking to move the hell up out of here. Um, <laughs> no tea, no shade. Miami, Florida, hands down, is the best place, I think, in the U.S. to live. The lifestyle, the beauty, accessibility. But there's just an article that came out in the Miami Herald two days ago. The median home price here is $655,000 a year, all right? I mean, uh, uh, per, per home. A two-bedroom condo here in anything worth living in is $500,000 a year, with your HOA fee ranging anywhere from $1,100 to $2,100. It's just freaking unsustainable. Florida is becoming a place for the rich, especially Southern Florida. And so I am not surprised that Florida is being beat out as a place to retire because those people are on fixed incomes. And between cost of living, insurance, uh, medical care, you, you can't afford to live here anymore. According to bank rate, Florida couldn't compare it to Iowa when it comes to affordability, health care, care weather. And, there it is. <laughs> um, but who's moving to Iowa? You want to go to Iowa, Al? Well, see, this is the biggest thing. Mm, well, listen, as you get older, health care is huge. Affordability is huge. You still get good weather in Iowa. I've never been. Um, and crime, you won't get the crime. But this is the part that Florida should be worried about. Florida's main uh, revenue or one of its one third of its main revenue for the state of Florida is property taxes and retired people own more homes in the state of Florida than anybody else in the state of Florida, meaning they pay more property taxes. So if they start to move out of that state, that state's going to see a huge dip in its economy. That right there is really huge. So Florida, y'all better turn this around. I will say I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised, though, if this study was commissioned by the Iowa Board of Tourism and Hospitality, because it's very hard for me to believe that any person of sane mind and body would recommend anybody move to Iowa. No right. shame, to Iowa. But, I ain't never been. Right. But it, it ain't shit there. But it was it wasn't just Iowa. They just won number one. Number two was Delaware. Number three was West Virginia, then Missouri, and then Mississippi. Not saying there's anything that those Oh, them first two, with the exception of West Virginia, and that's just me being gracious, those are not desirable places to live. <laughs> They're West not West Virginia too. That's like the incest capital of the world. Yeah, like nobody wants to live in any of I just did it because Al from Horse Pasture. So I'm nice. from Virginia, not West Virginia. There's a big difference between oh, West okay. and regular Virginia. Well, I, okay. I went to Florida school. I didn't know. All right. Uh, but <laughs> West Virginia, all them hillbilly. Well, not everybody, but there's there's a lot going on. In, in, in they say, Q, would you move back to ATL? Uh, Kamika said, um, you know what? With what we do for a living, uh, I'll, I'll say this. 
I know how to live in Atlanta. It would be a very easy move, and there's a lot of work there. So it definitely is not off the table. But believe it or not, Texas is starting to look a little attractive to me, and I never thought in a million years I would ever consider going to Texas, but it's starting to look a little attractive to me. What would you say? Huh? Dallas, Houston. Believe it or not, believe it or not, Dallas. Yeah, like I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm approaching forty. I'm looking for a life change, um, and I'm just looking at you know retirement and long term planning. And don't get me wrong, I can afford to live here in Florida. I can comfortably do it, but it's not about being able to do it. It's why. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. why would I go? I spend one point one million dollars on a home, and it's just me, and I can get the same home in Dallas for 500,000. It just doesn't make sense. You can still find nice homes here for $300,000, threes and fours. And you can find a beautiful house for five and six and a million dollar home here, you are balling. You'll have a beautiful, beautiful, amazing home. And there's no state income tax. We can just get rid of our crippled governor. We'll be good to go. I All think right, your home is beautiful. What'd you say? I said, I think your home is beautiful. That neighborhood's beautiful. No, no, I'm saying if we can get rid of our, our governor, the state will be good. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Like we say, it would be perfect if we get rid of him. No, I, yeah, I like my house. It's, it's coming along. It's getting there. All right, so coming up next, find out why people are sleeping on the streets in New York. And later, a man talks about his double trouble in the bedroom. This story is nuts. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, there's a video showing hundreds of asylum seekers sleeping on the streets of New York that has gone viral. Now, it's reported that buses drop off asylum seekers at the Roosevelt Hotel to be processed. But the hotel claims not to have enough capacity to process the immigrants who are still waiting for shelter. How can New York fix this problem now? There's a note. Mayor Eric Adams is requesting more federal help and funding to help with the processing of asylum seekers. Al, what do you think about this? You know, what I read is they're thinking about creating a tent city on, right, on Randall Island. Um, is what they're proposing so that they can get these people out of the city so it reduce the pressure and the overflow to the city and the city dwellers. Um, I think for sure Eric has to figure out how to mend that relationship with the Biden administration and he, he needs to claim a state of federal emergency so that he can uh, get those people off the streets and get them into a more safer area in the city. All right. Q, what do you think? You know, this is such a hot button topic that that Lens want to have such big emotions because there is an argument to be made. Fucking on people. We got people in the United States who need help, who can't even get care, who are living on the streets. Why should they be prioritized over them? And then there's the human side of things that say, you know, these people are seeking asylum. They're not coming over here recreationally and on vacation and they need help. And it's like, where is the balance? Um, you know, I, I really don't know what to feel in this situation. The human part of me wants the people off the street. The logical part of me realizes that this process is not a revenue or profit generating business. So people tend to not pour as many resources into things that are basically community service. And it just sucks. It sucks because America is the country that it is, you know, was like the... I don't know, the the dream place to live for most people that are trying to escape horrific conditions around the world. And we do have things in place for asylum seekers that are being persecuted or having issues in their country. But it's just gotten to a place where it's so bad in other countries, everyone's flocking here and we're running out of space. We got to find the balance of taking care of our own and still being sympathetic to people who need it. You know, and we're not like it's just it kills me when I hear about all the money going to uh, Ukraine. And we have our issues with uh with with our own people. It kills me when I hear this all the time. And I I, I don't know. We we got to find the balance somewhere. Like we we're too extreme. Like we're too much this way and not enough that way. We don't. There's a there's got to be a happy medium somewhere. All right, y'all. Detroit pastor pled guilty to uh, shooting and killing a transgender woman. Pastor Albert Weathers shot the transgender woman Kelly Stowe and dumped her body on the street. What do you think about this story? Real quick, he's facing eight years in prison for second degree murder and two years for fire, felony firearm. Wow, only eight years? That is crazy. Al, what do you think? You know what? I, 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 this is horrible. And it's even 
It's even with what the trans community has been telling us for years as it relates to their safety and their lives being endangered every day. The sad part is, is this man is known to be attracted to, the, to, to trans women. He goes down to that part of town and has hired various trans women in that community. A lot of them stop seeing him because not only is he really aggressive, but he is also cheap and he does not pay after the services are rendered. And I think in this particular case, what happened is this trans woman that he murdered used to be a football player and stands six, four, six feet four inches tall and I think he tried to take advantage of her and I think she pushed back and it got into a very ugly situation and it resulted to the life of someone who didn't deserve to die. I think he should be put underneath the jail for this disgusting act of hate crime that he has committed, not only on that particular trans lady that he killed, but all the other trans women in that community that he has wreaked havoc on. Did you say he is 6'4", or the, the trans no, woman? No, the trans woman that he killed was 6'4", and played football in college. So it was a big trans woman. So this one, he tried to bully. In my opinion, he tried to bully her and probably tried to get away without paying because that's what he's known to do with the other trans women on the boulevard because he's so big and aggressive. And I think this particular trans woman was like, I'm not having it. And it, 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 it turned ugly. And he resulted to killing her. The real Arredondo said, didn't his God say thou shall not kill? And HR said, what is his pastor's congregation saying? And so uh, be it one said, that's it, throw him under the jail. Uh, Q, what are your thoughts? Um, I got multiple thoughts here. First things first, I would love to have a conversation with the trans community presently as it relates to employment opportunities for them. Me not being armed with all the facts. I understand back in the days that they had to do sex work because it was the only work available to them. My statement may sound ignorant, what I'm about to say, but I'm curious to know now, is the street walking out of necessity still, or is it more of a rites of passage thing, a, a trend, a, this is what we do, a social norm for that community? Because it's very dangerous work and I mean, I live in the bubble of Miami, Florida. We're, we're kind of liberal down here. Trans people work normal nine to five everyday retail jobs every day, all day long. So I'm just curious to know why they have to walk the streets still. But the other thing that I want to mention, guys, is that community really has real things going on, all right? And re regardless of how we feel about some of it, everything that's been going on, especially a lot of the stuff that's been going on in the last two weeks, your feelings actually mean nothing when people are out here dying, all right? In order for you to feel something, at least you're alive. These people are out here dying, and that's a real problem. And I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, we are a very violent society to gays, the transgender people, and women. women. And kids. All right, a black mayor in New Bern, Alabama, is trying to do right by his city but he's accusing the white leaders of keeping him from taking office. 57-year-old Patrick Braxton filed a federal civil rights lawsuit claiming he was elected to become mayor, but the acting mayor, who's a white, allegedly held an illegal special election, causing white, the white mayor, Hayward Stokes III, to be reappointed instead of installing the black elected mayor. What are your thoughts on this bullshit, Q? You know what baffles me about this story? I read that the demographics of the city is 85% Black, all right? This really speaks to a lot of white people's innate desire to govern and police Black people. I'm not trying to be funny, but why would you even want to be... I mean, common sense says you are not representative of the community. The community is 85% Black. The leadership should reflect the dominant culture in that community. And according to history, they've always been white. They've never been elected. They've been appointed by the city council. It's time for things to change. And it's the entitlement for me. Um, Al, I'm sure Al's going to tell us how this can be rectified, but I'm pretty sure the police department is in cahoots. I'd just be curious to know what remedy this Black mayor has to make these people let him in the office. 
Right. You know, Q, the, the, that's it. That's the problem. See, what they did was they had a special election. And now we all know, Claudia, you're a political head. Special elections are only used to fill vacant seats. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, only not used. Uh, it's election. only used for resignations and deaths and removals because of scandal. It's not used in this case. So this is called, this to me is privilege, white privilege at its, at its finest. This to me is called Trump politics, guerrilla politics. They passed an ordinance to hold a special meeting. Everything they did was illegal. Didn't notify any of the residents. Used the six people, the six white people in the community to vote that the guy stays as mayor. For me, what's the remedy? The remedy is the state has to step in. The governor has to step in. Where's the outrage? Where's the outrage statewide? Where's the outrage from the NAACP? Where's the outrage from the Urban League? Where's the outrage from, from federally, from the, the president's office? This actually would be a good time for VP Kamala Harris to step in and look like a hero and add a solution to this problem. Hey, this would be good for her. But listen, these guys are so dirty that they locked the door to the town hall so that this new mayor and his new elected um, council members cannot get in and do their work. Where else do you get away with that? So the fact that this town is 85% black, and this is not going to be politically correct what I'm about to say. I was talking about watching the Viking series on Netflix and how white people just went to land that was not theirs and just took shit by force. And a, a town that's 85% black, I hate that I even have to suggest this, but y'all got to take your shit back. Yeah. I'm going to roll up you. in there and say, fuck you mean where you, you're not putting the person that we elected to be our mayor. We can't sit back and we shall overcome and pray and sing and go to church and pray that the white man is going to give us power when he wants power. It don't work. In Mississippi, let me talk about Mississippi, 38% black Mississippi. You're the blackest state in America with no black representation, very, very little black representation. Same thing there. They don't respect us praying and asking. They do not. Not asking for a civil war, I'm not asking y'all to be violent, but you do gotta take back your power. This should not, they should be afraid to do shit like this, but we have become so meek and not organized and fighting each other with goofy shit that we don't, we letting these people play in our faces like this. They Ain't already got the rule black book. And y'all letting this white man do this to your black man that y'all elected? I'm gonna tell them what to do. Go do an insurrection, okay? This, this, Warrant for insurrection. In jail. Yeah, well, I ain't going, but y'all go. Y'all go do an insurrection. Everybody be down there tomorrow at 12. <laughs> but that that would be more, it would make more sense. All right, y'all, keep it locked because coming up next is a man with a rare sexual asset and later someone has a fishy addiction. Find out who when we return. Years. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, a Los Angeles man is claiming that he was born with Two penises and is now speaking out about his unusual sex life. The man, identified only as Tank, suffered from diphalia, a genetic abnormality where the male is born with two penises. Now, Tank said in an interview that most women enjoyed his two penises, but ultimately it caused problems in the bedroom. Um, he also said something about a girl getting addicted to the two dicks and that she, she couldn't go back to having one and she was kind of going cray cray on him. Have you ever heard about this condition? And also, uh, Tank decided to get the surgery to remove the extra dangalang. Al? <laughs> That's so bad. Okay, two things. First of all, have I heard about it? Yes, it's rare. About one in, in, in every five million have this case. But in his case, it runs in his family. His uncle had two penises. So it could be something genetic. But the two things that I want to know, first of all, how did they get to the two penises with all that belly he got? And number two, I'm not trying to be freaky or anything, but wouldn't y'all kind of want to see it? Not his, but wouldn't you want to see somebody who has two penises, what that looks like? I'm trying to see one right now. <laughs> <laughs> you said you're trying to see one. All right. <laughs> My new man watches, so I can't answer that question. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to see. I, I want to see how does it. How what is one on top of the other? Are they side, are they by, side by side? 
So yeah, yeah I was curious. Side side. I, I was curious on that too. Are they both the same size? size right. Do they both are they both functional? Right. Um, well, I think he said. I think he mentioned in the article that it is functional. He said he ejaculated from both of them when he would. Right. Right. So you know, so could you pee from both? Like, there's just so many questions. But all in all, um, this would be gross to me. Uh, yeah. To I'll, see it, you think it would be gross? Yeah, I don't. I don't think there'd be anything attractive about two appendages. Down there. Why is it the people with two penises or the world's biggest dick? It's always attached to some gross looking guy. It's never someone hot. <laughs> ain't the hot guy. You better you protest, Claudia. You better protest. I'm irritated. <laughs> like Ron Jeremy. I met him. His dick is huge, right? Oh, God. You don't love it. Uh, Kirk, look, listen, Kirk Torian said put one in one hole and one in the other. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> Did, don't they have dildos made like that now where they got they the do. little, then they got the. Well, that's different, yeah, because it got the long. Ooh. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> what was that? Sound. That reminiscent sound. That wasn't oh. reminiscent. I'm just telling you. Bedroom candy, y'all. She she sell them. Mm -hmm. One for the hooda and one for the cooter. <laughs> Gigi Cake seventy seven said their mothers did not take any prenatal vitamins, or she took too many vitamin Ds. All right, an Atlanta mother <laughs> is going viral for claiming that she enjoys being pregnant so much she's now leasing out her womb to prospective parents for $45,000 fee. 26-year-old Yesenia Latour has delivered three babies so far and two of her own and uh, 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 a surrogate. Uh, what are your thoughts on a serial surrogate? And one thing Yesenia says she loves everything about being pregnant and wants to help other families through surrogacy. Al? I thought this was brilliant marketing, if you ask me. This is nothing new. We know that there are agencies all over the country that do this exact thing, but they charge a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars to find you a woman to find a woman's wound to be a surrogate for you. This young Latino right here said, No need to go to those expensive places at a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars. You can come to me at a sixty to seven percent discount and I'll do it for forty five thousand dollars. Mm. Key, what do you think about this? Listen, Did you rent this in his uh, womb? Baby? Well, I don't. I don't like children. I don't want children, so I would. Um, <laughs> but in the words of Erica Badu, work ain't honest, but it pays the bills. Let me tell you something. If she pop out two back to back, that's about eighty, ninety thousand um, dollars for a year and some change worth of work. Not a bad living to just be sitting on your ass eating bonbons and talking on the phone and watching the stories and eating. Um, as far as her being a serial surrogate, I mean, I thought most surrogates were serial surrogates. We know Shadina, who delivered Candy's baby and Shamia's baby, which is a little weird to me, per se. Al, if me and you ever decide to have children separate, don't go get my surrogate. Go get your own. <laughs> go get your own surrogate. That shit's weird to me. Um, but I, I like it. Listen, she ain't hurting nobody. And just as long as all the medical stuff check out, have at it. Yeah, that's what she wants. I mean, that must, to me, I find it most amazing that she's able to disconnect from the babies after carrying them. You know, that it's just transactional for her. Like, I'm like, wow, that's, I'm interested about that mentality to be able to do that. All right, y'all, coming up, a few beer bears in Japan have social media confused. Like, are they real? Are they not? Find out what that's about when we return. Welcome back to the show. All right, check out this post on social media. Any woman that has sexual interactions with her girlfriends aren't real friends, laughing my ass off. If y'all go, go to kissing when y'all drunk, yuck. Y'all ain't no damn real friends, y'all lovers. What are your thoughts and do you agree, Q? Stop reading me quotes from stupid ass 21 year olds or antiquated ass 60 year olds. <clears throat> like the, the, the life is not a one size fits all thing. There, there is a such thing as people getting drunk and just having fun. There is a such thing as people being sexually fluid. There is a such thing as somebody trying out something with their friend and it doesn't work and they go back to being friends and not being lovers. There is a such thing as two friends in, in, in having a threesome with a third and they interact in that moment and then that's the end of that and it never happens again. Life is not one size fits all and, and and stop thinking you ate and said something profound with these idiotic ass tweets. Mm. Yeah. A part of me agrees with you, but I had these friends that I hung out with in the DMV. They were ladies and they were best friends. <clears throat> But you know, that's how I was introduced, that they were best friends. They, you know, kids play with each other, blah, blah, blah. But it, they used to always get in arguments, like at the club or hanging out. And I was like, this is weird, only to find out, Q, 
they were actually lovers. So I kind of understood what they were saying, but you're right. As far as a broad stroke, this was a kind of a weird post. It's almost a prerequisite for me to sleep with you for you to be my close friend. I'm just putting all my business. <laughs> I'm just putting I'm, I'm just putting all my business out there. What? My closest, my closest male friends, we've had sex. Oh wow. Wow, I'm wondering about that Miami trip because y'all got real close after that one at Miami. Y'all hit this nasty, hit this nasty, I'll go. Y'all was, y'all. Don't she want to know? Don't she want to know? Don't she want to know? And I said two friends and the third in the room don't make it love us, right? It just make it. It was three of us in there. Uh, was it three of us or four? It was three, girl. <laughs> Not me, girl. Come on. I'm loose. I ain't loose, loose. I'm just loose. <laughs> <laughs> On an episode of TLC's My Strange Addiction, a man named Tyler said he'd been addicted to tuna since he was 10 years old. Tyler confessed his addiction while on a date with a woman. Now, if your date had a tuna obsession, would you be supportive? And do y'all have any strange addictions, Al? I don't think I have any strange addictions. I think it would have been okay that he had the addiction, but the fact that he carries around a tuna, a can of tuna, and occasionally have to open it up and smell it and lick it, that to me is where the red flag went up. And that to me is where I was like, okay, no, you're weird or you're different. So, but as far as my addictions, I don't, I don't think I have any addictions like that. That show got a bunch of weird shit on there. This girl was addicted to eating toilet paper. Oh okay. yeah, and chalk. Somebody was addicted to chalk, right? Or something like that. Yeah, sniffing gasoline. Q. I, I don't give a good goddamn when nobody say I can't prove it, but that show is a damn lie. All right. I can't prove it. That show is a lie. They had the one girl on here was e eating eating the mattress. She's addicted to eating mattress. Oh, as, yeah, I saw that. You saw that as far yeah. as him eating uh addicted to tuna. I mean, it's just an addiction we ain't heard of, but everybody's addicted to something. It ain't no different, in my opinion, if somebody carrying around them stinking ass cigarettes and got and Al talking about Al talking about my issue is carrying it around and gotta <laughs> lick it and open it up. Sound like a pack of new ports to me. They gotta carry it around, open it, smell it, and lick it up. It ain't no different than somebody who gotta go to Starbucks every morning to get coffee. It ain't no different than everybody who gotta start their day off with a can or okay. with a coat. It would not bother me at all, just as long as it did not hamper his ability to live normally day to day and interfere with our social interactions. Now, if I'm getting in your car, shit smell like tuna, you don't waste tuna juice in my pocketbook and all this type of stuff, then it's an issue. But if you just like to eat tuna a whole lot, have at it. Uh, I have a comment that has nothing to do with this topic, but I have to ask because it's not <laughs> I saw that too, Claudia. <laughs> R Bar nine twenty six said, "Funky, you and Miss Kenny hunched." <laughs> no, me and Miss Kenny have not hunched. I was not talking about Kenny. I was actually talking about some of my closer friends. I've only known Kenny for about five years now. I met him at the bar when we moved back. But now I'm talking like closer friends that, that, that date back to college. Okay. A zoo in China is claiming that their bears are real and not actually humans in costume. The zoo addressed the allegations after footage was released showing the bears standing up on two legs and waving at the zoo visitors. Y'all think this is real, or these? They just are they real Malaysian sun bears, or what? What is going on? Him? Uh, them ain't no damn bears. Them people. Uh -huh. <laughs> Those is people with them, them leftover Chuck E. Cheese costumes from the closed down Chuck E. Cheese. I'm sorry. When I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, the people ain't teach me nothing about horticulture or zoology. <laughs> but I will say this: they didn't teach me nothing about chiropractic or orthopedics either. That spine is too straight. That bear stands upright too perfectly for that to be its natural, normal posture, and is able to maintain that posture too long. That's a bipedal creature. See, I know a little something. That's a bipedal creature in that costume, aka a human. Funky, you know you put that comment in the group chat where everyone can see, right? Yeah, except the viewers. <laughs> you should never do that around Claudia because she one messy bitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go messy bitch. You are. Funky, your friend. <laughs> um, Al. So this is a deal, Q. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, that's definitely a person. And then I started to do my research on it. And, and, and you know, actually, you got to remember, these types of bears actually used to be in circus back in the day, and they looked just like this. These were the type of bears that were able to walk tightrope. They were able to pedal bicycles. They were able to do the ring toss. They were able to dance on their hind legs. And they were also able to play musical instruments. And they did look like that. They did like look like a human with a bear suit on. 
You're not finna gaslight me. Play <laughs> instruments, ride bikes, yes, the circus. Type yep. of, them is humans. I know, but that's that's right. They look they look like humans in a bear suit, but they're actually bears are extremely smart and they do all of those things actually. It looks crazy, y'all. Like it, it looks so fake, and like how the skin is sagging on the butt. It just looks really, really fake. Right. It was the waving for me. The waving uh -huh. part. Like, it was waving, like. Mm. I mean, we got a minute left. <laughs> oh, we got a minute left. Can I please uh, send a birthday wish out to my brother and my nephew, Zion? Happy birthday, Edwin, and happy birthday, Zion. Okay, very nice, very nice. What your messy ass was finna say? Because I, I can see that devil sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> she was ready, too. Look at her. That mean? smirk on her face. What do you mean? What did it say, Claudia? I didn't get to look in my chat. Look. <laughs> no, because I don't want you to think I'm being messy and telling the business, but he put it in the group for everyone to see. Yeah, it just wasn't. I just don't have authorization to tell somebody else's business. That's all. That's true. Okay, you can hmm. read between those lines. All right. <laughs> fun times, fun times, fun times, fun times. Uh, make sure you send us your What the Florida stories in our DMs and we will get to them as much as we can. And no, it's not nothing, no other reason than Florida. It's fun and we love to have <laughs> funky debate. I want to thank Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for The Rising and we will see y'all here, right back here tomorrow. And make sure you hit that like button in the chat. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Have a good night, soulmates. <laughs>